Hi everyone, in this course, we will see the interview questions related to Java. In this video, we will see the interview questions related to Java. First of all, what is Java? Java is the simplest and the most commonly used programming language which is based on object-oriented programming concept. It supports cross-platform, multi-threading, platform-independent and robust. Sun Microsystems developed Java in the year 1995 and later it is acquired by Oracle Systems. Next, what are the supported platforms by Java programming language? Java runs on variety of platforms such as Windows, Mac OS and the various versions of Unix or Linux like HP Unix, Sun Solaris, Red Hat, Linux, Ubuntu, Cent OS, etc. What is multiple inheritance? Does Java support multiple inheritance? Let's see. Multiple inheritance is a process in which the child class inherits the properties and the behaviors of multiple parent classes. But Java does not support multiple inheritance. Define a class and object. A class is a template that groups different methods and properties in a single unit. An object is an instance of class that represents various states and behaviors within a class. A single class can have multiple objects. Let's see what are the different types of inheritance in Java. Below are the different types of inheritance in Java. Single inheritance multiple inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hybrid inheritance, hierarchical inheritance. Here, one point we should know. Multiple inheritance not supported using Java class, but can be achieved through an interface. What are the features of Java programming language? It is simple, platform independent, object oriented, secure, robust, multi-threaded, high-performance, distributed and dynamic. Let's see what is simple. It is simple because Java is easy to learn and does not require any complex programming concepts like pointers or multiple inheritance. Platform independent. Java is not dependent on any platform since the code we compile and execute is the same in any operating system. This means we can compile the code in one system and execute it in another. Object Oriented Java uses a collection of objects of class to perform any operation and follows object oriented methodology. It is secure. It is highly secure since it does not produce any security flaws like stack overflow etc. This is because it does not use the concept of pointers. It is robust. Java is robust and reliable since it identifies errors at an early stage and avoids issues like garbage collection, memory allocation, exception handling, etc. Multi-threaded. Java supports multi-threading concept which means we can execute two or more programs simultaneously and thus utilizing CPU to the maximum. High performance. Java uses a just-in-time compiler and thereby providing high performance. Distributed Java supports distributed programming which means we can distribute Java programs in more than one system which is connected through the internet. We can use features like EJB, Enterprise Java Bean and RMI, Remote Method Invocation in Java to support distributed features. It is dynamic. Java is more dynamic when we compare to other programming languages like C and C++. This is because it can carry a large number of runtime information which we can use to verify runtime objects access. In the next video, we will see some more questions related to Java. Thank you. In this video, we will see some more questions related to Java. Let's see what is synchronization. Synchronization is a mechanism 
that ensures that only one thread is accessed the resources at a time. What is JDBC? JDBC is a set of Java API for executing SQL statements. This API consists of a set of classes and interfaces to enable programs to write pure Java database applications. Define superclass and subclass. Superclass is also known as a parent class from which other classes can inherit the properties and methods. Example, shape is the base class of square. And if we come to a subclass, a subclass is also known as a check class, which inherits the properties and methods from the parent class. Example, bike is a subclass of vehicle. What is an interface? An interface is an object-oriented programming concept that allows only to declare a function without any implementation. It is the responsibility of the class that implements the interface to implement the functionality of the interface method. This allows different classes to provide different implementations for the same interface method based on the requirement. What is method overloading? When there are multiple methods with the same name but different implementations, we call it a method overloading. We can implement method overloading in two different ways. Different number of parameters, different type of parameters. What do the terminologies JDK and JRE mean? JDK means Java Development Kit which contains many components like JRE, compilers, various tools like Javadoc, Java Debugger, libraries, etc. It is mandatory to install JDK in our systems to compile and run any Java programs. JRE means Java Runtime Environment, which is part of JDK that is used to execute any Java program. It also includes browsers plugin, Applet support and JVM. What does write once and run anywhere mean? Java is a platform independent programming language where we can write Java code and compile it in one platform and execute it in another platform. You can execute this Java program on any operating system. Since the output of the compilation, which is the bytecode, is not platform specific. So it is called as Vora. Write once and run anywhere. Can a Java file name be saved as an empty .java file? Yes, we can save a Java file without a file name by using only .java. To compile, we use the command java c .java. and to execute, we use the command java class name when we do not pass any values in the string array arguments of the main method does the value hold empty or null the value will be empty but not null what is the use of bin and lib in jdk bin contains all tools such as java c applet viewer awt tool etc whereas lib contains api and all packages What are the different types of access specifiers in Java? Java has four different types of access specifiers. Public, protected, default and private. Public. It is visible to any class in any package. We can declare public access type for class, variable or method. Protected. It is accessible within any class of the same package or within the subclass of the class where it is declared. To access outside, we can achieve through inheritance. Default The scope is within the package and does not require any keyword to specify. Private It can be accessed only within the same class. What is a Java Bean? A Java Bean is a software component that has been designed to be reusable in a variety of different environments. 
what will be the initial value of an object reference which is defined as an instant variable all object references will have a null value by default in java during initialization what is a constructor a constructor in java is a special method that is executed during instance creation of a class whenever we create an object for a class the java compiler calls the default constructor of that class implicitly we can use a constructor to initialize arguments for the objects which we use within the class the constructor should have the same name as its class name what are the different types of constructors in java there are three different types of constructors in java default constructor no argument constructor parameterized constructor default constructor when we do not create any constructor the java compiler internally creates a default constructor that has an empty body this constructor will not be visible to us no argument constructor this constructor does not have any arguments or parameters but can contain code within the constructor parameterized constructor it contains arguments or parameters that are used to initialize or assign values to variables is constructor inherited the constructor does not support inheritance and cannot be inherited in the next video we will see some more questions related to java thank you in this video we will see some more questions related to java why do we declare the main method as static we declare the main method as static since it does not require any object and loads the methods during class loading also the main method is the entry point for any execution in java what happens when we define the main method without a static keyword the java code compiles successfully but however it will throw no such method error what is mutable object and immutable object if a object value is changeable then we can call it as mutable object example string buffer if you are not allowed to change the value of an object it is immutable object example string integer float which object oriented concept is achieved by using overloading and overriding it is polymorphism what is a local class in java in java we define a new class inside a particular block it's called a local class such a class has local scope and isn't usable outside the block where it's defined why do we use inheritance in java it has the ability to reuse the existing code of a class it supports method overriding it also allows calling methods of superclass within methods of a subclass using the super keyword it does not allow to inherit the final class or override final methods it supports multiple inheritance using interfaces can we use both this and super keyword in a constructor no we cannot use both the statements together in the same constructor since this and super needs to be first statement within a constructor if we try to use both we will get a compilation error what is serialization and deserialization serialization is a process of writing the state of an object to a byte stream deserialization is a process of restoring these objects what is the collections api the collections api is a set of classes and interfaces that supports operations on collections of objects in the next video we will see some more questions related to java thank you hi everyone in this video we will see some more questions related to java what is nested class 
A class within another class is called a nested class. It logically groups similar classes together so that the inner classes can access all the members of the outer class as well. You can see the syntax here. Public class class A, public class class B. So if you see another question, can a class have an interface? Yes, we can define an interface within a class. This is also called as nested interface. Can an interface have a class? Yes, of course. An interface can have a class which is static by default. Let's see another one. What is garbage collection? Garbage collection is an automatic memory management process that frees up memory by deleting the unused objects. In this way, it effectively manages the memory and there is no need of manual destruction or deletion of the object. This is the reason that variables whose values are only declared and not initialized returns a value 0. How is garbage collection controlled? Garbage collection process is controlled by JVM, Java Virtual Machine, automatically when there is less memory or running out of memory. We can also control it externally by calling it by system.gc method to clean up the unused objects and thereby free the memory. Next one, what is the name of garbage collector thread? The garbage collector thread uses daemon thread. Let's see another one. What is the difference between final, finally and finalize? Final. Final is a keyword that is used to impose restrictions on a class, method or variable. We cannot inherit a final class. We cannot override a final method and cannot change final value. Finally, finally is a block that is used to execute important code during exception handling. Finalize. Finalize is a method that is used as part of garbage collection to free up memory by deleting or destroying the unused objects. Let's see another question. What are the supermost classes for all the streams. The stream classes can be divided into two types byte stream and character stream. The byte stream classes contains input stream and output stream classes. The superclass for these streams is java.io.inputstream and java.io.outputstream. The character stream contains reader and writer classes. The superclass is java.io.reader and java.io.writer. Next we will see another question. What is file input stream and file output stream? The file input stream is used to read data from the input file. It reads data in the form of bytes. It can also be used to read characters, but file reader is a better option for character oriented data. The file output stream class is used to write data into the file. How to set permissions to a file in Java? We can alter the permissions to a file in Java using file permission class. This class contains permissions related to a directory or a file. We need to set the permissions related to file path. Next we will see what is a transient keyword. A transient keyword is used to avoid serialization process. This means if a variable is declared as a transient, we cannot serialize it and cannot write its value or return its value. Let's see another question. 
what is a singleton class a singleton class in java means we cannot create more than one instance for a class this means we can create only one object for the singleton class even if we try to create a second instance it will refer to the first instance and performs operations based on that we can create a singleton class by declaring the constructor as a private and use static get instance method what is the difference between wait and a sleep wait this method is part of object class and can release the lock sleep this method is part of thread class and cannot release the lock Let's see another question. What is a volatile keyword? A volatile keyword is used to achieve a thread safe program. A change in the volatile variable is common to all threads. Hence, once variable can be used by one thread at a time. These are some questions related to Java. We'll see more questions in our next video. Thank you. Hi everyone in this video we will see some more questions related to java first of all what is the difference between an interface and an abstract class java provides and supports the creation of both abstract classes and interfaces both implementations share some common characteristics but they differ in some following features let's see what are that all methods in an interface are implicitly abstract on the other hand an abstract class may contain both abstract and non abstract methods a class may implement a number of interfaces but can extend only one abstract class in order for a class to implement an interface it must implement all its declared methods However, a class may not implement all declared methods of an abstract class. Though in this case, a subclass must also be declared as an abstract. Abstract classes can implement interfaces without even providing the implementation of interface methods. Variables declared in Java interface is by default final. An abstract class may contain non-final variables. Members of Java interface are public by default. A member of an abstract class can either be private, protected, or public. An interface is absolutely abstract and cannot be instantiated. An abstract class also cannot be instantiated, but can be invoked if it contains a main method. Let's see another question. What are pass by reference and pass by value? When an object is passed by value, this means that a copy of the object is passed. Thus, even if changes are made to that object, it doesn't affect the original value. When an object is passed by reference, this means that the actual object is not passed. rather a reference of the object is passed thus any changes made by the external method are also reflected in all the places let's see another one explain the available thread states in high level during its execution a thread can reside in one of the following states it can be runnable it can be running it can be waiting sleeping blocked on io blocked on synchronization or dead let's see one by one runnable a thread becomes ready to run but does not necessarily start running immediately running the process is actively executing the thread code waiting a thread is in a blocked state waiting for some external processing to finish sleeping the thread is forced to sleep blocked on io waiting for an io operation to complete 
blocked on synchronization waiting to acquire a lock dead the thread has finished its execution this is the thread states in high level let's see another one what are the data types supported by java java supports eight data types they are byte short int long float double boolean and character let's see another question how hash map works in java a hash map in java stores key value pairs the hash map requires a hash function and uses hash code and equals methods in order to put and retrieve elements to and from the collection respectively when the put method is invoked the hash map calculates the hash value of the key and stores the key in appropriate index inside the collection if the key exits its value is updated with the new value some important characteristics of hash map are its capacity its load factor and the threshold resizing let's see another what are checked and unchecked exceptions java defines two kinds of exceptions checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions let's see one by one checked exceptions exceptions that inherit from the exception class are called checked exceptions client code has to handle the checked exceptions thrown by the api either in a catch clause or by forwarding it outward with the throws clause example sql exception io exception unchecked exceptions runtime exception also extends from exception however all of the exceptions that inherit from runtime exception get special treatment there is no requirement for the client code to deal with them and hence they are called unchecked exceptions example unchecked exceptions are null pointer exception out of memory error divide by zero exception typically programming errors let's see another one what are runtime exceptions runtime exceptions are those exceptions that are thrown at runtime because of either wrong input data or because of wrong business logic these are not checked by the compiler at compile time let's see another one what is the difference between a constructor and a method a constructor is a member function of a class that is used to create objects of that particular class it has the same name as a class itself has no return type and is invoked using the new operator a method is an ordinary member function of a class it has its own name a return type which may be void and is invoked using the dot operator let's see another question explain public static void main string aux in java main method in java is the entry point for any java program it is always written as public static void main string aux here public public is an access modifier which is used to specify who can access this method public means that this method will be accessible by any class static it is a keyword in java which identifies it is a class based main method is made static in java so that it can be accessed without creating the instance of a class in case main is not made static then compiler will throw an error as main is called by the jvm before any objects are made and only static methods can be directly invoked via the class void it is a return type of the method void defines the method which will not return any value main it is the name of the method which is searched by jvm as a starting point for an application with a particular signature method it is a method where the main execution occurs string args 
it is the parameter passed to the main method let's see one more question what are wrapper classes in java wrapper classes convert the java primitives into reference types that is objects every primitive data type has a class dedicated to it these are known as wrapper classes because they wrap the primitive data type into an object of that class what are the difference between heap and stack memory in java let's see one by one coming to memory stack memory is used only by one thread of execution heap memory is used by all the parts of the application access stack memory cannot be accessed by other threads objects stored in the heap memory are globally accessible memory management follows lifo last in first out manner to free memory memory management is based on the generation associated with each object in heap memory lifetime in stack exists until the end of execution of the thread in heap memory it lives from the start till the end of the application execution its usage stack memory only contains local primitive and reference values to objects in heap space in heap the usage is whenever an object is created it's always stores in the heap space let's see another question what are the main concepts of oops in java object oriented programming or oops is a programming style that is associated with concepts like inheritance encapsulation abstraction polymorphism let's see one by one inheritance inheritance is a process where one class acquires the properties of another encapsulation encapsulation in java is a mechanism of wrapping up the data and code together as a single unit abstraction abstraction is a methodology of hiding the implementation details from the user and only providing the functionality to the users polymorphism polymorphism is the ability of a variable a function or an object to take multiple forms what is a map in java in java map is an interface of util package which maps unique keys to the values the map interface is not a subset of the main collection interface and thus it behaves little different from the other collection types let's see the characteristics of map interface map doesn't contain duplicate keys each key can map at maximum one value let's see another what are the difference between throw and throws throw keyword throw is used to explicitly throw an exception throws is used to declare an exception checked exceptions cannot be propagated with throw only checked exception can be propagated with throws throw is followed by an instance throws is followed by a class throw is used within the method throws is used with the method signature you cannot throw multiple exception you can declare multiple exception example public void method throws io exception and sql exception we'll see some more questions in our next video thank you